I see by the clothes you're wearing and the guns you're carrying, you must consider yourselves to be hunters. Do you not? And you want me to tell you what I know about hog hunting. All right, I'll tell you what I know. When I was just a young person such as yourself, I decided I'd be the finest hog hunter in the land. I presently found myself at the doorstep of Peterson's Gun Shop in Mount Dora, Florida, talking to Leighton Baker. Leighton Baker owned the gun shop and as a young man had been trained by one of the famous barrel makers of the 1800s, Axel Peterson of Denver, Colorado. Axel Peterson made some of the finest Rocky Mountain rifles of the time for mountain men and long-range shooters at the famous Creedmoor Distant Shooting Championships. Leighton listened to what I wanted to do, sized up my young frame, and decided then and there that what I needed was an exact copy of a Bridger rifle called a Santa Fe Hawken in the true and correct 52 caliber. And by the end of the day, I had a bona fide rifle, buckskins, a pouch, genuine simulated plastic cow horn powder reservoir, a patch kit, a cleaning kit, a bullet mold, a bunch of round balls Leighton himself had made, and a pound of black powder for practice. I went out and practiced with that rifle in the back of an old burned out orange grove and got so I could zip a ball through the center of a pie pan at 100 yards every time. Satisfied that I could hit a hog, I contacted my friend and we arranged for a hog hunt where he knew there was a bunch of rooting going on. It was a cold night when we arrived to set up camp in the wilderness camp area, along with about 500 others. But with some diligence, I managed to find an overlooked spot none of the other campers chose and pitched my tent. A sleep was long coming in the excitement and anticipation of my first ever hog hunt in the morning, but morning came soon enough with a jolt. Our fellow hunters stealthily rolled out of their tents, quietly got in their gear, silently packed their vehicles, loaded their muzzle-loading rifles, and discharged them into a peat bog right outside my tent. I learned later they did this to make sure they would fire because oil residue in the barrel could block the touch hole and the firing would dry that out. Unfortunately, I had pitched my tent in the newbie area, right next to the bog they fired into. So with that, my friend and I loaded up, dutifully discharged our weapons up tent, and uh, headed out to the happy hunting grounds a couple of miles down the dirt road into a preserve. At parked, we parted ways. He would go his way, and I would go mine. Walking was tough, but I managed to find an old trail that was still just wide enough to walk down on the hunt. There was hog sign everywhere with rub marks up to my belly button, indicating some 800 to 1,000 pounders must be in the mix nearby. There were pits in the ground where they'd laid longer than my body. There was torn up vegetation everywhere, but with my single shot 52 Santa Fe Hawkin that Leighton Baker had assured me was bona fide, certified, true, and correct, I feared no hog nor evil of any kind. I came to a fence line and walked down it, came to an old stand in an oak tree, stopped, climbed up into its protective bows, and rested. When I awoke, it was nearing dark, and I decided I'd better get back to the road. Presently, I came abreast of the same thicket I'd passed earlier, but this time I sensed something was amiss. Every step I took, the ground would shake, kind of like the mild tremors before an earthquake. I looked around, but, but saw nothing, and continued up the trail, but the ground started shaking more and more. I stopped, looked around again, and could hear a, a strange humming noise, kind of like an Indian Hindu chant, but at a higher pitch. Om, om, om. This was going on all around me. And then I noticed the bushes were moving. And then I caught a brief glimpse of a black bat 
horizontal in the field about navel high on my butt. Glory to God Almighty. I was in a whole nest of hogs, about 30 of them as far as I could figure, and they were all mine. Only one problem. I had one shot. I looked around me, and everywhere I looked there were hogs and more hogs, and hogs coming, and more hogs coming, and I knew for a fact what Custer felt like when he surrounded the Indians at the Little Bighorn, and I began to look for a place to make the final stand. Up ahead, about a 30 feet, was a small circular area about 10 yards in diameter of clear firing range, and I slipped as breathlessly as I could into it and took up position directly in the middle, whirring around, determined to ward off all hog attacks until help arrived or ammunition ran out. In my one shot. I figured the first living thing to charge out of any portion of the underbrush and into the clear would get a dose of hot lead, and then I would Davy Crockett style start swinging my gun until strength or hogs ran out. Whichever came first. I spun all around. The hogs everywhere around my small circle of life. Spinning and spinning, checking and rechecking for the direction the first attack would come from, I picked up a motion of bushes denoting a hog coming right towards me. A black-bodied beast was suddenly in the circle. <laughs> I dropped my rifle and took off running for all I was worth. The herd of hogs caught on my heels right behind and I could see my soul salvation was a climbing the oak tree in the distance and I ran for all I was worth and I was running and running and running. And I went straight up that tree and sat breathlessly on a branch, totally spent. I truthfully climbed that tree so fast I don't even remember climbing it. But I must have, because I was there. And from my perch I could see my friend running towards me in the distance, obviously alarmed by what he had seen. Since he was still far away, I took stock of the situation to warn him of impending doom and looked all around for the hogs. But they were nowhere to be found. Why, there wasn't no hogs. It appears we had all run away from each other. And the crashing noises I had heard were the crashing sounds of bushes as we all ran in opposite directions. Sheepishly, I climbed from the tree. Just as my friend ran up to ask what was happening, and I took artistic liberty of informing him that I'd been attacked by wild hogs. Had defended myself to the last shot, even resorted to blade, and had been forced to flee after a vigorous defense of my perimeter against overwhelming odds in a tactical retreat to the present position. My friend and I slowly and carefully began to backtrack to the circular clearing where, almost dead centered, was a hog. Shot straight through the head. Laying there like he was, he seemed, well, rather small. But it was a hog, and now I was a hog hunter. There was only one problem. My friend didn't think he was big enough to be legal. It appears I had killed a, uh, well, a baby hog. My friend said he had to be 13 inches, and I was sure he would have made that until informed that it wasn't length, it was to the shoulder. You can't imagine what goes through your mind. Well, we prayed over my little hog friend, and then we buried my little hog friend, the one that taught me so much in that cold field so long ago. And now you know what I know about hog hunting.